Hello, this is Don with the second developer diary for my Breeders game. And this week, I mostly spent adding a few new creatures and catalyst sources to the game. Um, the most fun is uh, for sure this leopard amoeba <laughs> that I made using Unity's cloth physics. Or rather, uh, abusing Unity's cloth physics. <laughs> Uh, this is the first predatory creature I put in the game. Initially, I wasn't going to have any sort of aggressive behavior or um, violence in this game, but I, as soon as I made this guy and he started hunting these critters around, I knew I had to keep him. <laughs> it's too much fun watching him. Um, I spent quite a while trying to optimize this cloth because it is a resource hog. It drops... When it's in view on my screen, it drops my frame rate from about 190 in the Unity stats to about 90. So <laughs> it's causing a lot of calculations, but it's pretty cool. Don't know how many of them I could have in a scene at a time. Maybe one, maybe two. I don't know. Not too many. Right now, I think he's stuck on a little mushroom. These are another new creature. These mushrooms. They're kind of a a free-forming flower type of thing where they grow in these clumps and like they're doing right now they bloom catalyst and after they all die in a little while later they'll start blooming in another spot nearby and these have turned out excellent they just kind of roam around the area and uh, they add a lot, a lot of ebb and flow to the simulation, so it's not just a constant supply of catalyst uh, shooting out from somewhere. And uh, it gives a chance for the creatures to eat a bunch of catalyst and grow in waves, you know, like you see in nature with uh, creatures flocking to where the food source is. And that's worked out great. I love these things. And they're actually a, kind of a good example of how I'm using the physics of Unity to drive this whole thing. Even the random placement of these mushrooms is controlled by a, a little invisible ball that you can't see that drops out of the source of these mushrooms and is just bounced around by the terrain and whatever's around so every time they come up they'll be in a different position different groupings even the placement of the the spore for the next set of mushrooms is just a free floating physical object that you can't see um, let's see what else did I do this week. I made some changes to these critter behaviors on the boxes and the spheres, kind of experimenting with uh, a way to make them a little more efficient and also a way to keep them from always going for the same catalyst like they're doing right now. I had it set so they're always looking for the closest one and that can cause some really dumb behavior uh, where they can just sit here up against a crevice or a wall and just die because they can't they're trying to get this one catalyst even though there's another one available so I've been working on that but I don't want to add too many complicated rules about it I'm trying to figure out a, a slick way to do it without generating any complex rules right now I have them just stop instead of always looking for the closest catalyst they stop when they see one that's close enough and it's actually surprising how much it's changed their behavior. It made these cubes much more robust. They can survive quite a bit better now. Maybe too much. <laughs> I've come to dis to realize that I'm really going to have to um, include in the final game or in, in, in a game version of this that some way to tweak the parameters and the behavior of these creatures by the people playing a game because so far, the most fun I've had is just making changes to the rules that I, you know, and the parameters that I've set up, and then watching what happens. So I need to figure out a way for the players to control those parameters. Oh, I've also added what I'm calling the Katamari bomb. It might be dormant right now. It's it's another kind of cyclical creature, kind of to simulate like a national a natural disaster where uh, where is it it's hiding there it is <laughs> this one picks up seeds 
I was thinking of a way we could c convert seeds into catalysts or just kind of keep a control on how many seeds are in the scene. So this guy rolls around and when he hits a seed, he picks it up and after he gets so many seeds, he spawns a few catalysts and then blows up and clears the area out like maybe like a forest fire or something. Let's see if I can get some seeds to stick on them. There it goes. Boom. <laughs> and it also spreads out the seeds and the mothers from the other critters. So that's another. I had. I, I was really happy with the way the creatures turned out this week that I worked on. So then the Katamari also drops another seed over here. And uh, pretty soon this will bloom into a new one. The creatures I made this week don't really bloom. Don't really increase in numbers. They're just kind of set in numbers they'll always in the case of this catamari the mushroom uh, spawn a, the same number of items each generation and this leopard amoeba he's just he doesn't die right now he just cruises around right now he's dormant I have it set up so that after it eats a few critters it goes dormant because he was just going through and mawing on everybody he could clear everything out <laughs> I'd like to explore um, some uh, territorial behavior with this thing maybe set him up with a little cave or an area that he calls his home and have him kind of patrol that uh, instead of being free roaming I think that would be a interesting way to put limits on a predatory creature like this so now he's done resting and he'll start going after these cubes again or whatever is nearby he eats cubes, he eats those stackers and he eats herders right now the cow cow herders so uh, that's mostly what I've worked on this week and it's turned out great I think my next step is going to be a few more critters yet just to get some more ideas and uh, to flesh out the number of mechanics that I'm using uh, I'm getting some great feedback already I'm real happy um, I've got some people who uh, like what I'm doing and they're telling their friends I'd like to thank Red Suit One and Fractal Wing for their feedback, and uh, anyone else who's offering feedback. I know that a lot of people have su they're making suggestions too, which is great. And a lot of people have been asking about evolution aspects, and I would I definitely want to add that into the game. Um, maybe not this first sandbox version, because the way I have it set up now, I just I, there's no way I can do it. I've, I've spent a lot of time thinking already about how I can set up a system that would allow for some sort of evolution of these creatures because uh, I think that would be awesome <laughs> uh, all sorts of ideas in that area too so I think what I'm going to do um, since I am getting feedback already is set up an area on the website on breedersgame.com where folks can go and help me brainstorm Oop, this catamaran is going to go off again <laughs> I'm using that detonator framework um, from Unity 3D Asset Store. It's a free set of assets for Unity and it works awesome. I'm also using the, the free hard shaders from the app, uh, the Asset Store that are awesome. That's what this see-through shiny amoeba and the Katamari metal is. So, um, yeah, thanks again. I made this, I, I got rambling and made this too long, but that's all right. Uh, thanks again for everybody who's left uh, feedback and suggestions, and stay tuned for more dev diaries and uh, updates as I work on the game. And we'll see you next time. Bye.